Hey guys, it's time for another no-win scenario. That's right, it's that time of the week for a Eagle Moss review. So let's check it out. Actually, I know I just said this was a no-win scenario, but it's actually a win-win scenario. Maybe a win-win-win-win scenario. Uh, first off, I get this fantastic ship from Eagle Moss, so that's a win for me. Uh, I'm going to review it for you guys right now, so you can see my thoughts on it. You can uh, get a close look at it, a lot of the details on it. So that's a win for you guys. Plus, if you want this ship, or you want other Eagle Moss ships, Click the link in the description below, head on over to the Eagle Moss site, and take a look at what they have. Add a bunch of stuff to your cart, and if you, uh, when you go to checkout, if you use the discount code TREKYARDS, all one word, uh, you can actually save yourself 15% on orders of $50 or more. So that's very much a win for you guys. Um, also, it's a win if you're a Canadian resident this month. Because this is November now, um, and as of yesterday, November 1st, the Eagle Moss uh, site is accepting Canadian orders, finally, after all these years. At least that's what my representative told me, so <laughs> hopefully that's still the case. Uh, so if you're a Canadian resident and want to pick up these Eagle Moss ships, you can definitely do that now. Like I said, click the, click the link down below, and upon tr um, checkout, use the code dis discount code TREKYARDS, and you can save yourself some money. So it's a win-win-win-win scenario for everyone. There is no no-win scenario here today, unfortunately. So if you came looking for a no-win scenario, I'm afraid that you're in the wrong place. However, that being said, we are looking at Kobayashi Maru today. The true no-win scenario. Um, this is a fantastic ship by Eagle Moss. Uh, I I'm actually really impressed with this. This is based on the 2009 J.J. Abrams film which you see the ship on screen for maybe a second and a half, maybe two seconds. But I've looked at freeze frames of that image and it doesn't seem to be the same ship. So I don't know what that means exactly. But we're going to take a look at it today. So first off, let's look at the magazine. <clears throat> here we have the magazine here. we got the Kobayashi Maru on the front. USS Kobayashi Maru. ESC, so Earth Cargo Ship. 1022, and this is a special issue. Uh, so this is one of the, the uh, XL Eagle Moss ships, I guess, because the XL ships are labeled as special. Hopefully those ones are available uh, with the discount code. Uh, some ships that won't apply to, so I do apologize for that. Maybe that is the no-win scenario here. Maybe this is one you can't get from Eagle Moss at a discounted Trek Yards rate. But anyway, it's worth a try. Go take a look. So, as I said, Here's the book, and we're going to be looking at the Kobayashi Maru type, operational in the 2250s, Kelvin timeline, uh, Starfleet simulation ship. So, doesn't say it's a real ship, but that's all right. Open it up. You got the same layout as always. Over here, you have your information on uh, the contents of the book, how to install the Eagle Moss on, or the Eagle Moss the ship. There's Kobayashi Maru on the stand, and here you've got a nice shot of the ship with some statistics. The Kobayashi Maru type is the class, operational 2258. The operator is Starfleet, and it is uh, in the universe timeline, or the Kelvin timeline, I apologize. Um, it says here that it is Starfleet. I don't know about that. Um, it does have a Starfleet design, but with Earth cargo ships, uh, I thought they were more civilian based, but I could be wrong. So, anyway, here you go. You got the first page. It talks about designing the Kobayashi Maru. Uh, the training scenario starship finally appeared on screen in 2009 Star Trek, thanks to the tal a talented team of designers. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, there you see it, and it doesn't really appear very much like the ship we have here. It's actually a little bit different, but that's okay. That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll live with that. Uh, the next page, you've got some discussion on the Kobayashi Maru novel. This is a novel I highly recommend you guys check out. It 
basically talks about how Scotty and Chekhov and Kirk uh, dealt with the Kobayashi Maru scenario. And on the cover of the book, you have a really interesting Kobayashi Maru design, which I've absolutely loved since I first saw this book. I've read this book actually a few times. It's one of my favorites. Um, and uh, the cover was... Uh, uh, the, the novel, sorry, was done by Julia Eklar. And uh, it shows a really interesting ship, i got to say. Over here we have some of the John Eves concept designs for the uh, Kobayashi Maru. Uh, some of these have been fleshed out in CGI versions by fans or whatever. And we've also done Strike Yards episodes on both of these designs. Um, talking about the John Eves concept. So, and we actually have John Eves join us for those discussions as well. So if you want to check those out, uh, by all means look up Trek Yards and Kobayashi Maru. On YouTube you'll find them for sure. All right, so here we got the CG model. Uh, it says here that Ryan Church um, used basic shapes that Johnny's had established for the Kobayashi Maru and combined it with aesthetics that he had applied to his designs for the USS Enterprise and Kelvin. So, very cool. On the next page, you've got these designs here. Uh, part of the design of the USS, USS Kobayashi Maru inspired other Starfleet ships in the film, such as the USS Excelsior and the USS Armstrong, as seen here in John Eves' concept art. And again, some great ships in that movie. Um, I'm not a fan of the Enterprise, as you guys probably know. I'm not a huge JJ um, fan. Um, if the Enterprise would have been a little bit better, I would have been, had less issues with it. But there are some fantastic designs in that movie. Uh, bringing back the magic, this just talks about the JJ um, 2009 reboot of the franchise. And uh, you got some great shots from different movies there, Star Trek II um, and the Kelvin 2009 JJ film. Next page carries that on. There's a bunch of great stills from the movie. And... Yeah, there was some there was some interesting and well done stuff in that movie for sure. I just wish the Enterprise would have been one of those things. Next page just goes on to talk a little bit more about that kind of stuff. Uh, just creating the movie, shake it like an analog picture. Um, how how ILM emulated Abrams' signature style. So, and again. A lot more about ILM and the effects for the movie, and the effects are actually pretty fantastic. A lot of them, they're really well done, and got to give the movie props for that. So and then it goes on to talk about the No One scenario, uh, which we see in Star Trek II. We got Savick there with Kirk, and uh, talking about her performance, and that the Klingons don't take prisoners, except of course when they do. Um, and then you got all your basic information about the Kobayashi Maru, that it's a Class 3 Neutronic Fuel Carrier. Um, and just some stats for it uh, from Star Trek II, which are really cool. And then it basically, he goes, it talks about how he beat the test. He cheated, because he doesn't believe in a no-win scenario. There's always a way. Whether that's true or not, I'm skeptical. But, and on the back he just got a nice shot of the model. Again, it's a cool looking little ship. So let's just get into it here. <coughs> Here's the box. You got a nice shot of the Kobayashi Maru on the front. And it's the standard Eagle Moss box. You got the regular TOS Star Trek logo on the side. All the other ones there as well. Voyager, Deep Space Nine, Star Trek TNG, and Star Trek Enterprise. The bottom of the box is nice and plain. The back has all the little uh, about the details of, you know, children not not suggested for children under 14. It's die cast with plastic parts. Keep packaging for future reference. And that's one of the things that I really like about the Eagle Moss boxes is that they are very well done in most cases. The smaller ones are very plain, uh, but the larger ones have nice displays that you can actually put them on a shelf and they're their own display if you want to leave the ship in there or you can just set the ship on top or whatever. Or have the ship elsewhere and have these boxes on a higher shelf or something. You can do that and they still make nice display pieces. So let's just get into this review. Which I feel is turning into a no-win scenario for some reason. So 
So here's the ship. It's very slender from the front, very slender from the side. It's got a very interesting profile. Um, the top of the ship looks absolutely fantastic. Some great shapes and really, really well done. Uh, the bottom, you get to see a lot of the cargo containers that are strung along here. And they're basically pontoons loaded with different cargo containers. It does say it is a fuel carrier, however, uh, in Star Trek II. So you got the registry number up there, the ECS-1022, uh, and the registry Kobayashi Maru, which looks fantastic on this model. ECS, of course, stands for Earth Cargo Ship. Um, the detailing on this is actually really incredibly done. Uh, the bridge module looks very unique, very cool. Uh, it's got the Star Trek pennant, and, or the, the delta and the, the uh, striping for the pennant, which is really, really nice. Uh, it's also got a very interesting aztec pattern on the hull. Um, very well done. It's kind of like a darker uh, ship compared to a lot of the other Starfleet ships we see. And I do kind of like it. It's very much like a, a dark camouflage, almost like a digitized camo uh, that you see in the military. The nacelles have a unique look to them for sure. Very nice and slender. Not as big and bulky as the Kelvin uh, of the uh, JJ Prize or the Ryan Church Enterprise. Um, very nicely done. I love the blue nacelles on these ones particularly. Um, I still think they should have been red for the... Uh, for the Enterprise, but that's just my opinion. The front has a very cool deflector dish, um, again made in this clear plast blue plastic, which depending on how it's uh, situated when it's displayed, will have a nice glow to it if there's a light source behind it. Uh, even the rear of the nacelles are pretty nicely detailed, looking really nice. And on the bottom, I love the extension of that deflector um, array backwards into like a like a hull configuration very well done not a lot of not a super lot of detail on the bottom but enough to make it interesting and i really like that this is one of those seldom seen even on screen like for like i said for like two or three seconds um but a fleshed out ship and to actually have the model of it is great and it does follow a lot of john eve's ideas uh, for a cargo vessel, and I think it's a really neat design, a great addition to a Star, a Star Trek fleet. This is one of my favorite things that has come out of the 2009 film. Um, this and the Klingon battleship, or the, the Warbird as they called them, uh, but the, basically the D D7 redesign for the Kobayashi Maru scenario. I've already done a video on the XL version of that from Eagle Moss. It's a great model and a great ship as well. Um, and this one just keeps that trend going, so this is awesome. Uh, again, lots of fantastic details and really a cool addition to any fleet of ships. So anyway, it is time now, as always, to take a look at this thing on the stand and uh, see how it looks. Again, get some more detail of it and uh, let's see how it displays. With it being very slender, I'm kind of, you know, skeptical as to how it'll look. I hate slender ships on stands. They just, you know, you need like an angled display so you can really see the ship, in my opinion, anyway. But let's take a look at it on the stand real quick and uh, wrap this video up for you guys. All right, so here she is displayed on the stand, and the stand actually has a very snug fit. It really slots in well, which I like. Um, look at some nice close-ups here. The ship and the details for you. Again, a lot of really interesting hull markings. I really like this. I would be fine if a lot of the other Star Trek ships had this kind of darker look to them. I really don't have an issue with that at all. And that registry really looks good on there. So... great job this is a ship that I didn't think we'd ever really see and to see it in the 2009 film was a nice treat even though you have to watch the movie I think more than once to actually notice it <laughs> uh, and you really have to look hard too so 
But anyway, so there we have it, the Kobayashi Maru on the stand. Now, if it's on a lower shelf, this looks beautiful. I love this design. Um, it does look really interesting, really dynamic. But I mean, if you put it on a high level shelf, this is where I have a bit of a problem with it. It looks very Romulan. Actually, it looks very much like a Romulan TOS Bird of Prey. From the front, it's got a nice look to it, actually. Again, it does feel sort of Romulan-esque, though. So, now if you put it on a higher shelf, again, there you get some nice dimensionality to it. Although, you don't see the registry, um, you just see the cargo pods and things like that, which still looks great. And here's that effect I was talking about with the deflector. If you do have it on an upper shelf with a window behind it or a light, it does seem to have like a glow to it, which is cool. Same with the nacelles, which is very well done. So, so there we have it, guys. The 2009 JJ Kobayashi Maru, a great addition to your fleet. Uh, definitely a fleet builder, and one that could fit in any timeline, TOS, Prime Universe, anything like that. I think it works well for all of them. It is a cargo ship, so the difference in design, as far as nacelles go, I think fit in either the Kelvin version or the Prime timeline. Uh, even in Discovery, I think this might work. So, very cool. As usual, I think Eagle Moss did a really good job with this one. I don't see any flaws in it, necessarily. Um, but it's very hard to compare it to anything besides what we see on screen. And if we do that, there are some issues because it doesn't look like the same ship, really. But that's all right. Uh, it is a fantastic finished design, and I am happy with this thing. So hopefully you are as well. Like I said, guys, if you want to get this or any other Eagle Moss ships, and you are a Canadian resident now, you can even go uh, click the link in the description below, check out the ships, add them to your cart, um, and on checkout, use the discount code TRUCKYARDS and hopefully save yourself some money. Uh, the TRUCKYARDS code was recently updated, so you save more money, and uh, it's a better deal for everybody. So do that. It'll help out the channel. Also check out our Patreon. Follow our live streams. Super chats are always welcome. All that revenue helps the channel keep going and keep making you great content. Speaking of, don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well as the Captain Foley personal channel. Always lots of cool stuff on both of those. And also check out other reviews, other videos from us. we got a lot of great stuff, a lot of watching uh, videos for your watching pleasure. And uh, we can you can definitely binge watch Trek Yards as a lot of people do once they find us. So anyway guys, until next time, I'm Captain Foley. And we won this scenario, guys. Mission accomplished.